Hello, this is Stuart Roberts at Hear Me See Me podcast. Today I've got a wonderful actor with me today called uh, Mark Manchaga. How are you, sir? I'm good, I'm good. How are you doing? I think I said Chaga, I was supposed to say Chaka. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I get all I get all, all forms of my last name. Yeah. I've been called worse things anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, how are you? How's it going? Good. I feel, I, I, I just, uh, I was talking to somebody and I was like, I think we're on day like 200 and uh, maybe 90 of Groundhog Day. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but we, it's good. We certainly are. <laughs> it's good. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't think I, I it also, in saying that, I, I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, you know, it it has allowed us to to spend time with uh, the people that we love and are close to, and you also kind of see who you kind of thin out some of the uh, some of the extra noise that doesn't have to be there. Yeah. Um. And as with you, like your your, I know that uh, your daughter had had a baby not long ago, and that must yeah, a couple of been weeks ago. incredible. Oh mate, it was it, it was it was a home birth, and we was all we were all in this big bubble, <laughs> and it turned into this big emotional bubble. And um, your grand, seeing your grandchild born was just amazing compared to even like your own children. And she went through it, and what a Women, oh God, oh, you've got to give it to women, haven't you? <laughs> oh yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> First of all, we don't have to deal with that, uh, with having a monthly uh, skyrocket of our emotions. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, and then they have a baby and we have nothing to compare it to. <laughs> yeah. Well, she, she had, we already got a lovely granddaughter and um, my son-in-law Tom is—he's he's a real man's man, and he—he de he desperately, desperately wanted a boy. And the moment it was—it's uh, a boy, you know—it just broke down. It was just the whole thing. It was like thirty-six hours of roller coaster, ending up with the biggest cherry on the cake. You know, <laughs> it was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> All in lockdown. <laughs> All in lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Life goes All on. Right. My friend. It must have been incredible. Yeah, it, it really. Was. I would have been a, I would have been a blubbering baby. I know that much. <laughs> yeah, was. Um, speaking of babies and children, and I want to take you back, my friend. Um, where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in San Angelo, Texas, uh, which is out in West Texas. You wouldn't go there if you unless you were specifically going to San Angelo or you were driving up to New Mexico from somewhere else in Texas. Right. It's, um, it's not a, it's not a tiny town, but it's not a big town. It does have, I mean, it still has a very small town feel to it and it's grown since I was, since I was growing up there. Um, but I think it's, I think, I think we're the, like the largest city that's not on on an interstate in Texas, right? So it's just like small little highways that go through there. But um, yeah, I mean, it's basically a farming and ranching from farming and ranching community, and, um, and there's obviously other stuff. My parents were neither. My dad was a he has a, he has a flooring shop. My mom was a teacher, and um, I just worked on other people's farms and ranches growing up. <laughs> <clears throat> Is that the thing, like you wanna, you know, when you go out and do stuff, it's like you was going to get work on a farm to get some money, like as a kid. Oh yeah, I wanted to be. I mean, I was, I was gonna be. Uh, I was, I was cowboy through and through. I wanted to. My, before I before I got into acting, uh, I desperately wanted to be a professional rodeo cowboy. Did you? I wanted. To, yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to rope. I this. Uh, this old this old guy in my hometown, who uh, was our 
he was our our uh, state representative. Um, he said, I don't know, I don't even know how I got involved with Rob, but he had hired me to help him get limestone to build his house. And I would go out and I'd get a couple of buddies and we'd hook a trailer up to my truck and we'd go and we'd dig these massive stones out of the ground. And, uh, and, and it was part of my, I mean, he paid me, but like part of my payment also was uh, roping lessons. He was a big, he was a big roper and polo player. And so I kind of got into both of those and the, you know, the, uh, it's, it, that was the dream was to be on the rodeo circuit and, uh, you know, just have my truck and my boots and <laughs> get a lady and yeah. go from town to town and, and see what I can make of myself. I mean, I don't mess about that. Like that, that is, that is a, a real full on hardcore sport, isn't it? Rodeo night. Oh man. I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's a rough life. Yeah. I mean, you're on the road constantly. I mean, it's kind of like being an actor, like, yeah, you're kind of never home. No. Uh, and it does take money to, uh, keep horses. Up. Yeah. So I didn't have, I didn't have that at my disposal. So I wasn't sure how long it, how long a horse would be around if I if it was to be in my if, if it was be owned by me. <laughs> so where did it transition? Where did you you go from that to to acting? Did you did you go straight into it, or did you go in another field? Um, no. Well, I, I it was in college when I still was you know still driving my big old truck and. Uh, I mean, I still, I, to this day, I still carry my ropes with me wherever I go. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I, they're, they're at, they're at home in LA right now. People are just like, what? I had them in New York. I used to rope, rope chairs up on the roof, do what, you know. Um, but I, yeah, I was in college. I don't know. I had a, I had a wild idea after it was, it was kind of, it was after seeing a movie and, and, this experience uh, with this, uh, um, gosh, what well, I just, uh, with a hypnotist. Right. Those two things kind of came together and I just had this idea and I was like, I think I want to be an actor. Yeah. Um, so there was no smooth transition and I went to school at Texas A&M, which is, an, it's an engineering and, um, engineering and mechanics school uh so it's not really where one would go if they wanted to be an actor probably the last place they would go if they wanted to be an actor um but that's where that's that's where that kind of transitioned and then you know as you follow the brick road and find people and places along the way you uh I've, I've I've stumbled to where I am today. Yeah. Where was your first experience of acting? Then, what did, what did you do? I did a. Well, it, it was at at A and M. I did. Um, I think, you know, I just I had this idea. I wanted to do it, and so I went and auditioned for a play for of mice and men, and um, I played Carlson, the old guy. Yeah. And I'm sure I was brilliant back then. I can't remember. <laughs> it goes with that side. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, cr hunched over and uh, my arm wrapped up. But um, yeah, that was the first thing I did. And then I went to, and after that, I told my parents, uh, I'm going to move to LA and be an actor. And they kind of pulled in the reins and were like, why don't you talk to this guy who, I mean, we're not connected to the entertainment industry at all, but this guy that my dad grew up with, oddly enough, in a tiny little town called Cristobal, which is outside of San Angelo, his graduating class was six people. And one of the guys that he grew up with, who's kind of pseudo family to us, um, he, he's a television director. And 
he's been, he's been very successful and he's, uh, I don't know if he's still doing it or not, but they put me in touch with him and he told me not to go to LA to go to New York and study. And, uh, and also gave me the talk, like, I can tell you how to be a doctor or lawyer, or whatever you want to do. And, uh, you can have a nice life. Um, don't do this, but if you're going to, you should go do this. And so I went to New York and um, I did a summer program. It was basically just like an intensive of, of this, uh, of the studio. And then I was kind of sold after that. I was like, I'm going to go to New York and be poor and um, struggle for my life and <laughs> uh, try to, Try to make some art. It, but so that, where did you? What did you first go into? Like uh, the theatre, or did you go straight into TV? I, well, I did. I did that summer there. I went back to Texas, and then my first jobs because <clears throat> back then Texas had more production. Right. I got a couple, <clears throat> a couple of jobs on some films and. TV shows that were shooting in Texas. Then I went back to New York and studied for two years. This is after like probably four years after college. And, uh, and then I didn't, and I didn't try to work when I was back there. I just wanted, I was, I was very serious about, about studying and wanted to get it all, everything out of it. I could. And, uh, you know, that eternal, uh, student, ideology and I did do I did some theater but my first you know my first good job came in TV and there's a funny divide that happens when you go into TV versus theater a lot of theater people don't see you as a theater actor no. um I desperately still want to do theater, but my, my path has kind of has led me doing TV and film, uh, which I'm very grateful for. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also, you can't, uh, you can't match that energy that you get on stage no. in, in film and TV. I mean, it's just, you know, a completely different medium, but um, yeah, so I started uh, TV kind of is where it started and it's where I've remained in some films here and there. You've, you've had some amazing roles though, haven't you? You know, like, um, uh, you, 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 I've just was looking at the list of all the things you've appeared in, you know, like you've got Black Mirror, Manifest, The Sinner. Um, what, what's been your, what's been like a, a, one that you could really get your teeth in? Um, one that I could sink my teeth into, is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think I, I think the the first the one that it, it still I still wish I could go back and talk to the writers and tell them to to have changed what happened. It was a great show, but Homeland was uh, you know, and I and I got that I got that job literally with I think I had. I thought I had $60. Turns out I had $20 in my bank account when I got it. I mean, I was just, I was waiting tables and it was kind of this weird period where, well, I wasn't waiting tables at that point. It was this period where I couldn't really have a restaurant job because I was auditioning so much that I couldn't afford to miss out on them. Uh, and anyways, I, I remember I got that and it was like this, it was basically like a three page monologue. And I just fell in love with that character. And uh, it was supposed to be a one off and then they ended up bringing it back. Yeah. Still not happy with the way they ended me, but um, <laughs> which I didn't really end. I just kind of like never came back. Huh. If you go, um, you go with a bang, didn't you? <laughs> what's that? If you go, you want to go with a bang. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, 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 my 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 take on if I could rewrite Homeland, my character on Homeland, I think she came. I think she went to Mike, uh, about Diego who played Mike, and she said, "You guys need to stop 
snooping around basically and i and i said well i think that louder would he would he would cause such right he might even blow himself up just to prove a point yeah and that would have been my ending yeah. i would have i would have put on a vest <laughs> uh but it didn't happen i did but that, that I did and mm. sorry I did, I did love the way they they brought it to an end though I, I, I did yeah. Like, find, yeah, because I, I, sometimes I often find things, you know, when I've really, because I really, like, like we all do, invest emotionally in all the characters. And when it comes to the end, it's almost like this bit of loss goes on. But uh, with okay. that one, I was quite, I was quite uh, satisfied with what they did to the characters at the, at the end. Yeah. Were you, were you, were you, do you just watch shows that have British actors in them? No, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, no. Damien, the old Damien <laughs> Lewis. Yeah, no. Um, no. Uh, they're, they're, I think the Brits have done well, you know, in the last few years. They've, uh, they've got some amazing actors out there, you know. But, uh, they I am do. biased. Uh -huh. <laughs> I am biased. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love TV and film of all, of all sorts. Yeah. But that, uh, I, I, it's Homeland and uh the three that still like uh, that really you know there is a there is a bit of a uh mourning period when you yeah lose it like when you when a character that you love is no longer around yeah and that and and homeland i mean homeland and ozark and uh the outsider those three characters, the most damaged characters I've ever played, but I've like all three of those. Uh, I mean, I'm, I am a bit of a baby, but um, I wept. Uh, like this, when it was done, I had to have a period of uh, just alone time and uh, letting my tears come out and. Um, yeah. But it's a good sign. It means you it means you you love it. So, yeah, it means it means you've taken it on board, and it's like it's sort of like I can't imagine because I'm not an actor, but it's got to be it's got to become part of you while you're in it, and it? it's got to, you know if you did that feeling, then then you wouldn't have really attached to it, would you? The character. Yeah, and there's something about those damaged characters that I just like <laughs> cling to me. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's why you like I me. Love, mate. <laughs> I love the, the I love the, the pain. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That they struggle with. I think we all I do. Know. I think they're the ones we tend to attach to, isn't it? You know, and it, it, you find yourself, you just you tend to root for the wrong people sometimes, but I can't <laughs> help it. You know, like when I'm watching, yeah. something, you know, the most awful people, you just still want them to win. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Which leads us on to the Ozark. You got, you know, you got, <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> it was such, uh, it was such a good show. I mean, it's, it is, I mean, they're, you know, they're finishing up, they're starting the last season right now. Yeah. Shooting. But, um, I mean, I, that couldn't have been more of a gem for me. I didn't, you know, I didn't know where my character was going when I got it. I knew that, I knew that it, it, it seemed like a good role and I needed the job, uh, which that's a perfect combination. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, when I, you know, when I found out what was happening, that, that, I I can't remember if we if if we talked about this at all, but I was outside. It was at the hotel um, with a, a bunch of the uh, cast, and we were leaving this one night. And um, Sophia, who plays Jason Bateman's daughter, I I we were, we were all we were outside in this back courtyard, and we were all going to bed basically, and. And I was holding the door while people were going in. And Sophia said, uh, 
So you have some, you, you got some broke back action coming up. And I kind of was like, hmm? And I said something, she was like, oh, you, uh, you, don't, you don't know? I was like, no, uh, what, what's happening? And then anyways, I ended up talking to the showrunner the next day and he was kind of appalled that I hadn't received the scripts ahead of time but it was it was just the the most lovely turn uh for that character that i yeah could have imagined i i didn't had no idea what was to come yeah um but it was yeah and the writing on that is is so great i was talking uh, i was talking to somebody yesterday this thing i'm just came for some additional shoots here in las vegas uh but they were talking about ozark and she she said uh she said i she said I, the whenever i heard i don't know shit about fuck she was like that line will never i don't know if that line can ever be beaten and chris mundy is an amazing writer yeah right somebody was saying i i can't remember if it was leaner or, or not but somebody was saying their mother is on a text chain that's I don't know shit about fuck, but I, you know Ruth says that, and I can't remember what when when it was she said that, but uh, yeah, the writing on I mean Chris Mundy is uh, he uh, the whole team the whole team of writers is yeah. incredible, um, but yeah no it's a it was a, it's a gem that show, um, <laughs> and Jason is uh, is uh, he's. May, he's done a lot of good things for a lot of really good people, uh, actors and crew and whatnot on that show. Yeah. And might I say one other thing, Alex Fogel, uh, the casting director who's done loads of stuff uh, that, that you would know um, and who is by and large responsible for a large portion of my career um they've all been you know it's it it takes a whole a whole crew to to make something like that so yeah uh i couldn't have been happier and i couldn't have been sadder as yeah. well <laughs> <laughs> it's like because it's it's wonderful really that um they're managing to carry on with so much work you know even in spite of what's going on in the world that things yeah. are getting done yeah yeah let's let's hope i yeah. mean it's still it's still going uh yeah. there are you know there's 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 bumps along the way but yeah yeah i guess people are like we we have to we have to do it and fortunately every the things that i've done since this have all been extremely safe and yeah um people follow the rules so you kind of have to yeah um oh. There was, was that? I said, of course, yeah, you've got, you, you know, it's, it's there for a reason. Yeah, I know, I know that there was that thing about Tom Cruise going off and, you know, rightly or, but you could get, you get the, the, the idea though, that there's so many people are putting so much effort into, in, into making sure these things happen that, that no one can just take it for granted and be sort of flippant about anything like that, you know, because it's, it's, yeah. it, it, it's everyone's life's on the line, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Forget we just see the characters and the actors, but you know, there's an army of people that are all relying on this. Yeah. Yeah. Um I real quick I, I love how you say of course. Of course. 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 <laughs> yeah. Course mate. Course. Course mate. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I, sorry, I, I, I won't attempt to do a British accent. I, I, I'm very, uh, I'm very hesitant to do a British accent nowadays <laughs> because I get, I, I get, uh, I get quite a bit of flack for it. <laughs> what I thought was good is not good. <laughs> My daughter, who's uh, she's the one who trained for musical theatre, um, uh, she's really good at accents, 
and um, she's, she's the one who trained for musical theatre and just um, graduated before the pandemic hit. So the poor thing has not really been to any auditions or anything. And she's desperately on now. <laughs> and now, since this year, there's things coming, opportunities in Europe. And now she's going, oh no, because they're getting, she's getting, cause, because of Brexit, <laughs> you're too complicated, you're going to need to get your visa <laughs> to get into Europe. So... I don't oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, she's getting like hit for it left, right, and centre. You know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't even think about that. With yeah, Brexit. yeah, yeah. Now it's gone through that that whereas she could just nip and go to Spain or France or anywhere, they the, the production company would have to get her a visa to go. It's early days. Maybe they'll find a, a quick route around that. But at the moment, it's just putting a red flag up on on people. So she's a bit of a an albatross when it comes to <laughs> acting, yeah. bless her. <laughs> oh, that's she such a bummer. Give up, I'll give you know, good luck to her. She doesn't give up. Yeah. And my She's son's young. a hairdresser, yeah. and he likes. He would like to go into acting. He did it all. We got like all kids, and they all went to theatre school together when they were young. And he he joined in, but he went off and he became a hairdresser. But he's. Uh, we, funny enough, we had a chat the other night and it was, I, I broached the subject. Well, if you want to be an actor, and I said about Russ, you know, like, you can, how are you going to cope with, with that situation? <laughs> sort of like, it took him a while, you know, to say, I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, there yeah, well, I mean, that's why it's always good to get that, to get that talk, like, don't do this, don't do this. But if you're going to do it, then here you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of haircutting. Yes, mate. Well, look. look, um, hey, look. I, <laughs> you're looking great. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> these were, this was, this was done by, I mean, of course, this is, I've, I've just woken up, you know, <laughs> I haven't done anything. But, uh, hey. This this cut was uh, a custom home job. Yeah, by my friend. By your friend and uh, <laughs> some, With scissors, scissors, some, some, some gifted some shears that you gifted, <laughs> as well as the oh, yeah, trimmed yeah. up my my beard. Yeah, uh, it was it was very unruly. Yeah, um, a few days ago. Well, we're obviously talking about Lena Headey, and she did, you know, yeah. she she is the biggest closet hairdresser I've ever come across in my life. The joy that comes across her face when she does this. <laughs> mm. <laughs> she loves it. She does, and because uh, we, you know, people who know the podcast know that Lena's our ambassador. Um, and everyone, you know, was so thrilled when she came to the Whitechapel mission before Christmas. And bless her, um, she was going, like moving to <laughs> moving the next day. You know, how generous! Yeah, she wouldn't have caught me giving anyone half hour if I was moving to another <laughs> country the next day. But she came, and she was in no rush. And um, once I got the clippers in her hand, I couldn't get them off of her. You know, she she yeah. amazing. You know. And, and she, but she gave such such love to everyone. Um, I know you'd love it as well, mate. And I know you'll at one point you'll come and join us. And you know she had, she had such love and respect for for the guests. You know, um, and it, it's it's nice because people have a preconceived idea about people who are successful in the entertainment industry. They don't sometimes realise um, what genuine wonderful people they are. You know. Um, and she really is. She's a real treasure, and uh, it was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she and she absolutely loves the haircuts for the homeless. Yeah. Um, you, you, you come up in conversation more than you know. Oh, All right. Oh, good, good. <laughs> um, yeah, she's uh, ever since I first she first come on board, she's really been supportive. Um, well, and I mean, I, yeah, I adore her for that, but it's also, I mean, it's such, uh, you know, it's such a cool thing and uh, that doesn't really explain it well, but an, an amazing thing that you, 
that you do there, uh, the, you know, Lena's, she just talks about the, the you know, the, the change in people when they get the, you know, the hands put on them and all of a sudden they look different and they feel good about themselves and um, it's really beautiful. And the relationship, you know, at least to have that human relationship in the in a chair for 20 minutes or whatever, I, however, I don't know how however long it takes, but um, yeah. How did, how did you start on with this? Um, I was uh, in April this year, I'm 15 years sober. And part of my sort of recovery was to go and, I used to go to the local Salvation Army and talk to guys about alcoholism and, you know, if they have problems with drugs and things. Because I knew what I was talking about with that. <laughs> so I was quite, yeah. I could be helpful. And um, I just saw a guy in America cutting hair in, in, in New York on, on the, the guys in the street. And it just, it, it just struck a chord in me. And then the next week I thought, right, taking me scissors, the homeless guys come in, I offer them in a haircut. Um, and Mark, I, I, I've been hairdressing for a very long time, but I'd, I'd had a, a salon owner for 30 years. And so I was a bit punch drunk with hairdressing and, and everything else. And it, it reignited my love for hairdressing because it this pure exchange and kids go into hairdressing because they just love to make people look and feel better. But then yeah. the business and an industry, like a lot of things, you know, like it all becomes about other stuff and you lose that as their initial passion. And this was such a beautiful exchange of someone feeling low, feeling down, having a chat, making them feel better. Uh, uh, and then when you show in the mirror, you know, getting that, yeah. oh, or that lift. Um, and it blew me away. And I just thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm coming every week. And then a lot of her friends said, I will come and help. And other places said, can you come to us? And before I knew it, I knew we could replicate it in a safe way. And so uh, in six years, we've got 67 sites. We've got over 600 volunteers and we've given over 40,000 haircuts. But that's mainly down to the generosity of hairdressers and people wanting to help. Uh, um, and, and, and to be honest, this is why I started, set up the podcast because I was meeting so many amazing people that some of them are known, but you know, most of them are these unsung heroes that no one knows about. And their stories yeah. were amazing. And, um, and it's wonderful to have people like yourself and Lena on, uh, cause it brings attention to it. Also, I love talking to you and, and it's, I find it fascinating, but, at the same time, it then brings focus to the people I put on who are who work in a homeless center or or give their life and devote their life to it. Um, and and it, it every everyone who does it, you see that the, the reward they get is unlimited. You know, because you go. Yeah. I've been in and feel, I've had the world on my shoulders, and I've come out and I've just thought, what? Well, you're just so lucky. Yeah. So yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No, no, that's, no, that's not too much. But <laughs> no, it wasn't. It's not too. I, I'm. I. I think it's. I mean, I think it's incredible. And you know, one of those things that uh, just kind of happened organically, and yeah, all of a sudden it went from I'm going to do this once a week or whatever, and and then yeah, it's turned into what it is today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's weird though that you, uh, it's weird because I don't feel like you really enjoy talking to people that much. Uh, so I don't, I'm kidding, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> you, you got real serious. You were like, mm -hmm. I thought, I'll shut the fuck up. <laughs> Stop swearing, Stuart. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't think I've had done one of these where I was enabled. There's a little button when I put it on the platform and it says, is there is there bad language? And I've never been able to put no on that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, once. No, once I did when I spoke to Brother Kevin, who runs the Capuchin Centre in Dublin, um, and he's, he's um, a Capuchin monk. 
and I managed oh, to save myself for half an hour. <laughs> it's the only time yeah. I've done it. <laughs> so, where's um, a big, uh, where, where's the future now? Where, 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 what are your plans with, um, with with acting and things that are happening for you now? I don't know. I, I've uh, I, I started a. I'm doing just an episode of a show that I'm very excited about, but uh, I don't know if I'm able to say what it is. Don't just think. Uh, but it's one of those. It's one of those that's just like one episode. Oh, right. but a show that I never thought that it would be in my orbit, and yeah. um, uh, I started it in December, and I, I think all the actors on the show are they do other shows as well so the scheduling is quite um difficult yeah and with covid it, that's also uh, plays into it but so i don't i don't know when i finish that now i, don't, I think it's sometime in april oh, uh know. which we're just assuming that i'll have a beard still and not <laughs> and won't have another job hopefully i will have another job yeah. and i'll be able to keep the beard but yeah. um uh and then uh i there's another thing i can't say that i'm uh that you might be excited about um <laughs> and then i don't know i mean I, there's been a couple of irons in the fire that i'm uh things are starting to get get back um like more stuff's coming in yeah there's one thing that i yeah I've, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm not trying to be secretive, but I no, just no. would rather not say. No. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't, you know, uh, that's, I have no idea. Yeah. Lena and I are working on, uh, you know, we've, we've got some ideas we're throwing around there to, yeah. to work on, which would be uh, an absolute joy if we got to do something together. Um, and make it easier uh not being you know not being gypsies and yeah being able to do something in the same place yeah, so um same continent would be helpful wouldn't it yeah yeah same <laughs> continent would be helpful and uh yeah otherwise i don't know i'm just kind of sitting back waiting for seeing, seeing what's gonna happen um <laughs> such a weird time uh you know with just with the, for everybody yeah. but uh i don't know i'm i'm you don't want to settle for something that's not uh i mean yes you have to work yeah um but uh as i've learned on some jobs you don't want to take a job if you don't absolutely have to and there's one that's near and dear to my heart right now that uh, is that <laughs> is that way. It's a constant reminder. Yeah, that's what we need in life. I've I've got and, too many of them, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, but if you don't if you don't screw it up, how are you going to know you're doing the right thing? That's true. <laughs> that's true. Well, if ever so, like, when you when you're doing this together with Lee, if ever you need a, an overweight Londoner. <laughs> as an extra let me know <laughs> sue you would you would not be an extra you would be uh, <clears throat> a cameo oh god just just let me just so i, just so I can piss my kids off <laughs> yeah yeah um and hey congrats I mean, 15 years coming up in april yeah. that's yeah. amazing yeah i'm lucky i'm lucky so yeah because i know many people have struggled um through this time because it's hard lockdown's hard you know oh man i mean you know i i think that's one thing that probably hasn't been reported as much uh, mm. as it's been happening but i think people that you know people are going nuts and like i can only imagine if you uh it could send you down a dark hole um as it has done with several people yeah yeah uh so yeah uh fortunately for me it's gone the other way my it's been a uh i've, I've like cut 
cut out a lot of stuff in my life yeah. over this period. Um, love will do that though. Uh, <laughs> I mean, when I say that, I, I mean, like, you know, going from being a single guy in New York, yeah. uh, and just being able to go to the bar, uh, yeah. at whatever time, any day of the week. And now I'm like, I, I forget to have a drink now, you know, to like, I forget to like, I, I, I drink tea all day. Yeah. <laughs> I think we say about love, like I, I've, I found that when you actually fall in love with someone is the first time you're then able to start loving yourself a bit. Um, Absolutely. And, and it may, you know, that's what, that was my experience anyway. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a strange thing to happen at 45, but um, uh, I'm very grateful. Never too late. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, but it is true, you know. You, you, I, I think it's so true that. I mean, uh, falling in love like just opens you up and yeah. kind of shreds away a lot of the harm yeah. that you can do to yourself. Yeah, um, because. I don't know. I don't know if it's because someone all of a sudden becomes more important than yourself or uh, what it is, but yeah, it's a, that's, well, you're going to make me think about that all day now. <laughs> well, we better leave it at that then. <laughs> yeah. On that note, we can go, we can both go and ponder, but um, yeah. I'm really grateful, Mark. I know like you, you've got a lot going on and, and uh, I really appreciate you giving me the time. And um, I can't wait to have a cup of tea with your brother. It's going to happen in the next few months, hopefully. But you same, know, same I here. Love everyone there, you know, like you know, much love to all of you. Yeah, um, lots of love, man. Yeah, and uh, it's good, good to chat with you. And you, thank you.